Lucid dreaming is not real. Now you're probably wondering why on earth would I make a video titled Lucid dreaming is not real because I teach lucid dreaming and my entire website and brand is focused on teaching people how to have lucid dreams. Well, I actually want to tell a little story. So before we get into that, make sure to subscribe. Uh, I post weekly lucid dreaming videos and all kinds of tips and sleep hacks and things like that. So the story is like this. Okay, before the first research was published or produced proving lucid dreaming, which was a study in which they tracked the eye movements behind your eyelids to people would agree on a series of eye movements like left, right, up, down or something. They would agree on this series of eye movements before entering a lucid dream. And these qualified or you know well-practiced lucid dreamers would agree on the sequence of eye movements. They would go to sleep you know, with a, a monitor uh, attached to their head so they could track the, the eye movements. They could see like, oh, okay, this guy is moving his eyes left now and then up, and that was the agreed sequence, so he must be in a lucid dream. And they did this with a, you know, a bunch of lucid dreamers, and it proved to the main, to the modern world, it proved that lucid dreaming was real and that people could do it. But my point is this, before that experiment happened, before that research was created, People all around the world were, they were still lucid dreaming, okay? People, people have been lucid dreaming since the beginning of time. Since people have been sleeping, you know, lucid dreams have been happening. So why did people as a whole, you know, the, the majority of the Western modern world, why did they only think or believe lucid dreaming was real after that experiment uh, was created? You know, after the research was done. Only after it was proven in a lab by scientists with a controlled experiment, only after that did people believe it was real. And my question is this, right? How many things, how many different ideas or concepts or, you know, topics do you not believe are real just because they have not been proven in a controlled lab study? Uh, and an example of this would be astral projection. Many of you in this audience, but also a few um, other people in the community, uh, for whatever reason, don't believe astral projection is real. And I would argue that they only don't believe that because of two reasons. Number one, they've never done it. Number two, they've never seen a study proving that it's real, a scientific study proving that it's real. And those are two very weak reasons to not believe in something. Because, like I've just explained, lucid dreaming wasn't real, uh, or at least it wasn't proven, until that experiment happened where they tracked the eye movements. People before then were still having lucid dreams, just like people before then were astral projecting. And this could be a controversial video, and, you know, I'm curious what other you know, people in the community and people watching think about this, because... When I first got into the lucid dreaming space, when I first started learning about uh, lucid dreaming, um, I had I, I agreed with the majority of people, and I agreed that, lucid, that astral projection was not real. In fact, I actually made a video titled Astral Projection versus Lucid Dreaming, and I said in that video and in other videos, I said that lucid dreaming is real, astral projection has not been proven. However, I've recently changed my stance on that because of the reason I just explained, because I have to, it's almost kind of funny to think about, but I have to think, you know, people didn't believe in lucid dreaming before it was proven. So it might be the same thing with astral projection. You know, it, there is a, a high chance, I would say, that we just don't know how to prove astral projection in what we call the scientific community today. Because you have to also understand Lucid dreaming, by definition, is being able to control a dream in your brain, in your own head, while you're sleeping, right? And to be aware of the fact that you're dreaming while it's still happening. Now, that's quite easy to prove because you're in your head, you're sleeping, uh, and you can just as easily be sleeping in a lab with an EEG monitor attached to your head. You know, you can be have your blood and pulse measured at the same time. Uh, it's very easy to track that sort of thing. Astral projection, on the other hand, what is astral projection? Well, the concept or definition is being able to leave this physical reality and this dimension, to leave this dimension 
with your astral body and to leave your physical body in this reality behind. Now, from what I've just said there, do you think that would be easy to track or monitor using the current technology we have in our labs? Probably not. Uh, <laughs> I would say no, definitely not, because like I said, it's leaving this dimension. We don't know how to measure other dimensions, but that doesn't mean they don't exist. Not at all. Um, it's in fact been hypothesized and widely agreed on that there are other dimensions and that there is a huge possibility of there being multiple other timelines and universes. It's literally called the multiverse theory and it's very widely agreed upon by many scientists today. It's very widely agreed upon. So if we believe, even in the scientific community, that there are other dimensions and realities and universes, then why don't we believe that we can travel between them? Especially when you think about the hundreds of thousands, I mean, I don't know how many, there's probably millions, of first-hand experiences and accounts of people that say they have done it throughout history, throughout civilizations, not connected by land. You know, this is reports from all around the world at a time, from times where they couldn't even travel between countries easily, from times when they didn't have boats or, you know, planes or, you know, easy access to other countries. So you have to ask yourself, why would they lie? And a common, you know, explanation for this is that it's just lucid dreams they're having. The people that think they astral projected, they actually just had a lucid dream and we accept that. That's a nice explanation because we can prove that and we, it sort of makes sense with our beliefs and how we understand the world to work. Now, the reason that astral projection becomes more of an uncomfortable belief for a lot of people is because, and here's where it gets a bit philosophical, okay? If you believe in astral projection, you believe that the soul can leave the body and is not necessarily tied to this body. You believe in life after death. And that's a big one. That's a big, that sort of polarizes most people. Most people either know there is life after death and know that this, this life is a tiny part of a bigger picture and that we're all connected and part of the same base consciousness. And then the other side, the other half of people believe that this is the only life we have and that all we are here to do is to reproduce, attain wealth and assets and objects, and die. And if, you be, if you're in that group of people, then yeah, of course, astral projection is going to be a difficult belief and a difficult, almost irritating topic for you, because your subconscious and conscious mind are thinking, hang on a second... If people can astral project and leave this dimension, then that means that this is not all there is. There are other dimensions out there, and maybe there is life after death. So maybe my entire life belief system could be wrong. And that's not, that's not comfortable for most people. That's actually going to, in, in most cases, that's going to freak people out. They're going to leave some crazy comment on YouTube, or you know, they're going to just say, no, it's a load of nonsense, I don't believe in it. They're going to go about their life. But for the people who do believe in life after death, you have to ask yourself, if there, are other, if there are other dimensions, why wouldn't we be able to travel between them? Especially when you have millions of people saying that we can, you know? I mean, all throughout history, people have been, uh, they've been referred to as different things. Uh, people who experienced astral projectors, people who could do this. Uh, they've been re referred to as things like shamans, seers, you know, even witches in some cases, wizards, but also just wise men. And the idea of using not just dreams, but also third eye sight and intuition and guidance to see things that are not accessible to your senses, to see with more than just your eyes. This has been documented throughout all history in many different types of civilization. And you can look this up, you can research this yourself. So my question to you is, as a lucid dreamer, or as someone who wants to learn how to lucid dream, what do you believe? Do you believe in life after death? Or do you believe this life is all there is, and astral projection is a load of nonsense? I'm really curious. But you have to, you have to be honest with yourself, and you have to say, why do I believe that, one way or the other? Okay, let's say if you don't believe in astral projection, why, why not? 
Is it just because A, you haven't done it, and B, it hasn't been proven? Because if it's one of those two reasons, they're not really good reasons. They're not good enough reasons to not believe in it because there are many things you haven't done, but that doesn't mean they don't exist. You might not have skydived, but that doesn't mean people aren't out there jumping out of planes every day. You know, just because you haven't done something, it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. Even if you've tried to do something and you haven't been able to do it, that also doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. Um, so that, that reason is kind of void, right? The real reason is, for most people, it's just not been proven. And like I've said, many things that we know as fact today were not proven scientifically 50 years ago. Another example is if you had a heart attack 100 years ago, you would have been pronounced dead on the scene immediately. People would have said, right, this guy is dead. There's no pulse, so we'll go and bury him. Now, if that happened today, you would not be pronounced dead. You would be given resuscitation. You know, they'll bring you back to life. And in most cases, like it's a really high success rate. In most cases, they can bring you back to life within, I think it's like the first half an hour or something like that. I don't know exactly. Uh, but my point is, things have changed because the science and the technology has improved. We know more now than we did 50 years ago. My question is in 50 years time, maybe we'll look back on today and we'll think, why on earth did people not believe that astral projection was real? Because people have been doing it for centuries. Just something to think about. Thanks for watching guys. This video and this channel are supported by my Patreon followers. Please consider giving just a dollar a month to support this channel or just click the links in the description. You'll find links to various lucid dreaming products, articles, techniques, and tutorials. If you did enjoy this video, please click the notification bell and subscribe and I'll see you next time.